through the mists comes forth RPG a day in the year 2021 RPG a day comes back for its eighth year a time in August when every day we tackle another question or topic by answering in a way that uplifts the gaming community and answers questions people might have about this crazy hobby of ours that serves to build the community and bring it up that many of us make blogs about, video blogs, art, or great works. In celebration of the community of gamers, I welcome you to RPG A Day 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am Rob, also known as the Dungeon Tutor, also known as Omnicide, depending on the day and what hat I'm wearing. Uh, today I am wearing this hat so that I can talk about RPG a day. And RPG a day has been going on now for, for a number of years, and I've been contributing for the last five, and we're ready to get into another topic. Today is the tenth day, and the tenth word is trust. So that's kind of a good one. Um... Trust is a, a, a topic, obviously, that can be felt throughout. Um, <clears throat> for instance, an adventuring party wouldn't work if the group doesn't trust each other to at least work for mutual survival. Uh, there's a certain amount of trust when you go into a battle that the people at your back have your back. And if they don't, why are you traveling with them? Why are you getting into fights with people if you can't trust them? So... There's a certain amount of party building that goes into trust. Often those first initial encounters are ways that, as the competition with the world around you or the monsters that you fight stiffen, you need each other the more. It should be demonstrated again and again and again, so that trust should build. And that's kind of important. Also, because we're in a role-playing game here, and we are almost subconsciously in some cases, sometimes very much so, exploring elements of our own personalities as we play out these characters. Almost every character is some facet of your personality that you let go of for a walk for a bit. Um, maybe it's the part of you that longs for wish fulfillment, like you really wish that you could change the world and here's some problem and you have a character that can actually fix it, unlike possibly the very real problems you might have in your own life. Maybe uh, you always wanted to be the coolest, prettiest person and maybe that wasn't your reality. And now you can play someone who is the coolest and prettiest person and you know, really enjoy living out that fantasy. Um, maybe you, you were love with magic and you, you really wish that you in real life could do magic and you can't because the world is mundane and boring, unfortunately, but now you're playing a wizard and you can do magic and that's cool. It's really cool. I love, you know, that's what I love about role playing is you can do things like that. But here's the thing. The more of yourself you bring out, the more trust comes into play. Because trust is something that you kind of have to build up with a group. If they're your friends, maybe it's a little easier. But revealing a part of yourself, especially if it's an inner part of yourself that you don't keep on the face on the surface too often, that can be scary. You can delve into places with these characters in some of these role-playing games that might not be comfortable, might not be nice, might not be the way you see yourself. I have played characters myself that I'm like, uh, where did this come from? Because this isn't me. But I've played nasty, evil people, and I consider myself a pretty decent moral person. But I've played some real wretches, some amoral people with some deep scarring that leads them to do some pretty horrible things that I couldn't comprehend myself. At least not on the surface. Clearly there's something deep down in there that's capable, that has the steel to do something like 
sentence 5,000 people to their death by sending them out an airlock uh, because character is scarred from his family being killed by the Empire, so when he has all these prisoners he's in charge of in an airlock, he can go, you're all guilty? Where'd those people go? They're gone. Yeah. Um, I, and, and that's just scratching the surface, honestly. So, realistically, trust among people in a role-playing game it's actually quite important. Now, if you're playing a pickup game, if you're in a convention, you're probably not going to delve into these issues very much because you don't trust these people implicitly. You're probably not going to be revealing inner deep secrets of yourself. Maybe you're screened by playing a pre-generated character that you had no input on. Maybe you're a bit quieter than you usually would be. Maybe you don't talk in character as much as you might because you don't trust the other people. You don't feel as free to do these things. And that's normal. It's absolutely normal. You should not feel like, oh, okay, you know, I'm killing the, the, the mood or anything like that. Especially if there's somebody in the group who's naturally gregarious. And they are animated and excited and they, they seem like they're in character almost instantly and they, they have a voice already and they're just looking for opportunities to role play and be that person and, and really and just enjoying it. Some people can do that. Um, I'm kind of that way myself and I'm probably had a fair number of people around in a group who were like, who's that freakazoid there who's, who's like just going on with his with his bad Scottish accent because it's playing a dwarf or, or something like that. Just because it's fun. It's a fun stereotype to drag out sometimes. Even if it's not particularly right, sometimes it's fun. Or maybe who's the person who dares to yell out a battle cry across that the, the room can hear uh, when it's time to go. You know, I've been known to do that from time to time because that's not my particular thing. I... I used to be really, really introverted, and I kind of put that part of me to rest a while ago. While I don't necessarily like being made a laughing stock of in public, I'm also not the kind of person to hold myself all that seriously anymore. So, uh, I do tend to kind of go a little overboard sometimes in public games. Just fair warning here. But trust is something that is oftentimes built up over time, over shared experiences and things like that. Another thing is that's important is the level of trust between game masters and players. Because, after all, as a player, you are investing something in your character. You'd expect that your character is not going to be treated as worthless by a game master. And that is, admittedly, a more modern concept, because now characters have more investment in them than they used to. When they were just a pile of six random numbers and some chosen gear wasn't all that important back in the day and your character could get trashed by the game master and you both laugh about it and you roll up another character and keep going, perhaps. Or if you decided that, wow, this game really sucked because this person just doesn't know how to make a dungeon and my character just died stepping on the first stone in the, in the dungeon because even though I checked and did everything I could, just died out of hand because they made it almost un un unwinnable, Maybe you decide to leave. Maybe that's your your litmus test for how good a game is, and you you know you walk away without much regret. Fair, okay. But nowadays, when characters take sometimes an hour and a half to crank out, and I know all you role master people out there are going an hour and a half, <laughs> wimps. Yeah, <clears throat> we're we're gonna cover that particular bugbear at some point. But. Characters do take generally longer to make. We want to know these characters inside and out a lot more. That's why 5th edition has role-playing elements like a background and goals and flaws set into the character themselves with concrete rewards for, for well, semi-concrete rewards, for playing out your character and doing a good job in role-play and storytelling and stuff. There's all kinds of details to figure out. There's a step-by-step -step process that you have to go through. So characters can't just be dashed off in five minutes anymore. That's... I, technically, you could if you wanted to get, you know, the the opportunity for choosing anything. You could randomize everything, I suppose, and make characters relatively quickly. It might take about 10, 15 minutes now, but it, could it be done? Sure. Especially with computers. If you have computers and everything, you're not writing anything down, it goes a lot faster. But 
modern characters, the understanding more is that you have choices and you get to make a character that's a lot more like what you're idealizing the character to be. Maybe the, the, the baby version of it that they will eventually grow into that hero that you might imagine, but still you have some hopes, you have some expectations. And again, in fifth edition, if you if you start the game and you're in front of a dungeon and you take one step after having done everything you could think of to to not die on your first step and your first step and you die instantly, do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars, you're probably going to be a little sore about that these days. You're probably going to be I just got trashed out of hand and if I want to play again I have to go through that process again. And there was no warning. It wasn't fair. And the dungeon, oh, life isn't fair. Or I never promised you that it would be fair. And it's like, well, I never promised you I was going to give you infinite amount of my time to keep making characters for your dungeon that just killed me on the first step. Um, and you can make that determination. But there's more of an investment there. We trust that the game master is going to, A, hopefully, make an interesting story that we want to be a part of. B, we'll treat our characters with a certain amount of respect and not just trash them or disrespect them out of hand because they can, obviously. They are they are the ruler of this fantasy world. They are the ultimate deity that controls everything. So if they don't have any respect for your character, why are you there? If you're there just out of a, a grim morbidity, a kind of masochism about... You know, letting your character, a certain investment of your work and stuff to make this character, um, and just trash them, well, you know, really, you might want to think about it. Now, of course, these are just generated with fast characters, and they're basically pre-gens. This doesn't mean as much, um, although I'd still kind of have a problem with going through, you know, just having characters killed out of hand for no great reason. It doesn't, I don't think that makes for a very interesting game or story myself, but if you love it, God bless but there is a certain level of trust that the Game Master will respect the characters that you've come up with enough for, for them to at least have a chance at living and thriving and doing interesting things. Um, there's a certain amount of trust that your Game Masters are going to make the player characters an important part of the st the most important part of the story. And there's tons of horror stories online, just go check out Reddit sometime, of people who allow their Game Master NPCs to come forward and completely overshadow the player characters uh, in, in completely game-breaking ways. Or situations where the characters just were really just bystanders in the whole story moving forward. Now that's not to say that the, the story can't have things that go on without the player characters being there. That can sometimes be a very engaging way of telling a story. But the characters should still be the most important thing. Everything else just happening off screen may spur the players to move their characters more quickly or in a particular direction, sure. But you shouldn't you shouldn't lose track of the point that all these people around who are not the game master are there because they kind of expect them to be doing the important things in the story, and if they're not, somebody isn't being served quite right. And the Game Master is just basically telling a story to himself at that point, which is unfortunate. It has happened, but it is not really kind of fair to everybody who's there. It's just, yeah. So, yeah, congratulations, you're playing non-player characters in my game. That's not fun. So, there's certain things that we trust in a game, and that trust is often built... The first time you play with another person, it's generally going to be a feeling out session, knowing what you can trust. And there are some shortcuts that you can make. For instance, playing in the isolating circumstance of a pickup or a convention game can give you a lot of information about how a person runs, their style, and if they are somebody that you're willing to kind of open up with and explore some personal role-playing themes with. There are certainly people that I've played with that I wouldn't trust to do that. Um, they may tell an entertaining story, but there may be some defect there that I don't feel comfortable with on a personal level, so I will make a very, say, superficial character to just kind of enjoy the ride or something, not something that I'm really interested in exploring some personal themes with or getting really attached to a particular character over. Um, sometimes... It can be a first time at a, with a group, especially with a group that already exists. That's really, 
Because now, not only do you have to worry about the Game Master treating you in a way that you're going to enjoy, you have to worry about how you're going to gel with the new people in the group. That can be really harsh, because now you have multiple personalities that are all going to be bumping up against you. There may be pre-existing uh, conflicts in a group that you're going to have to navigate around and such. And trust becomes a really precious commodity. So I think it's good if everybody understands that dynamic, that trust, along with friendship, along with respecting others, these are all things that we aspire to. Some of them are absolutely, in my mind, mandatory. That respecting others is absolutely mandatory. If you don't respect others, you shouldn't be playing with other people. <clears throat> the same thing goes with, are you worthy of trust? And doing things to show you're worthy of trust involves maybe opening up a little bit and sharing things. That, that idea of the person who is an edgy lone wolf who doesn't work with others because they're so involved in their backstory. They don't generate, nor do they share empathy and trust. They are pretty much making themselves an island unto themselves. Um, but trust is such a precious commodity, and when it's won, when it's earned, it makes the game so much more interesting because you can really allow yourself to be vulnerable in a way that you otherwise couldn't, or maybe shouldn't, People who open themselves up all the time will keep getting kicked in the teeth because not everybody is worthy of that trust. But hopefully you can find a group of friends that you can actually explore some interesting ideas of, maybe pull out some characters from those dark recesses of your mind that otherwise you really wouldn't get into, and show off another side of your yourself that you can exercise and walk around in and maybe build up your empathy or, you know, scratch an itch that you might not have even known you really had. So, just a thought, but that is, to me, one of the more important core elements of a role-playing group is the element of trust that you build up with each other. So, hopefully this makes you think about uh, how you project yourself and how your group uh, projects around you if you have the luxury of playing with other folks. Uh, maybe it can uh, give you some insight into dynamics when you sit into a group and you really try to feel how... We all do this almost in, subconsciously, but it is an important element in how we deal with each other is how much we can trust each other. So, thanks one and all. I am Rob, also the Dungeon Tutor, also Omnisci. Thanks for joining me. If you liked this and you feel like subscribing and such, I do make a lot of videos. Uh, there will be more for the RPG a day. There have been some pre previously, if this is the first one you've seen, so feel free to check them out. I, I like to think I'm entertaining. And uh, if you have anything to say, far more importantly than any of that, feel free to comment below. Your comments often inspire my videos, and uh, we can get a conversation going about things that interest you. So if you have any horror stories where your trust was broken, I've got a few too, so um, you know, feel free to commiserate, and uh, you know, we can we can talk about these things because it's worth talking about. Quite honestly, um, it's an important part of the dynamic of groups, and uh, sometimes it, it, the scars of broken trust really can can linger, and sometimes can be helped to share your stories with other people. So, but anyhow, until next time, and I hope there's a next time. Thank you and farewell.